Karibu wageni na wananchi. Yes, today we are heading to East Africa to talk about Tanzania and their return to the Africa Cup of Nations having missed the 2021 edition. Yes, I'm sad that they're coming here without Kenya because my Kenyan brothers did not qualify for the 2023 AFCON, but Tanzania are back at the tournament and we are joined by expert and analyst and agent Michael Mwebe who talks to us about the Tanzanian national team, the Taifa Scars, what we can expect from them coming into this tournament and how this team has come together in such interesting circumstances. Enjoy. Michael, thank you so much for joining the On The Whistle podcast. I, I'm not sure, but I think you're our, only our second our second Tanzanian joining the podcast. Our first being Arafat Haji, who's the... the, Tanz, uh, the um, Yanga. Yanga VP, which obviously probably rubs you the wrong way as a Simba fan. Um, so apologies for that. <laughs> I shouldn't have brought Arfati, that up. <laughs> Arfati, Arfati is a great person. He's my friend. I know him. One of the like, young uh, guys who are coming up in our football and uh, trying to change the old way of doing things. So he's a good guy. He's a good guy. No, it was, it was a pleasure having him on to, to speak about ta- Tanzania and uh, specifically Yanga. But today we're talking about Tanzania, the Taifa stars, not not Yanga, not Simba. We're getting away from all of that that nonsense. But I, I, I have to ask. <laughs> it's a way of life. If you yeah, talk sorry, about the way of life. You talk about Simba and Yanga. <laughs> That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. But but I mean, we you say that and Tanzania for me is one of the most passionate footballing countries that we don't know about because obviously, you know, like, like the you know like us Kenyans and and a lot of us other East Africans we've struggled on the continental and international stage but you go anywhere in Tanzania I mean the, everyone is playing football I remember going to Moshi and then just we we're we we're walking around at six a.m. There's a football match people just said come join and that, and and so I think this is a wonderful opportunity to see Tanzania on the continental stage obviously you were there in 2019 me as a Kenya I love bringing this up because obviously we beat you guys Ogada Olunga's <laughs> brace will will live long in my memory as the peak of the peak of Kenya but sadly since then though Tanzania and Kenya's fortunes have been very much going in the opposite directions. Tell me what, what? How is Tanzanian football looking at the moment? How are fans, you know, anticipating the Afcon? What are the expectations, kind of coming coming into the tournament? Um, uh, according to, of course, people are very happy that uh, we are going back to Afcon, just like uh, for the third time in our history. And in terms of expectation, it's not much. It's not much. Like um, it's a bit tempered. Uh, because uh, he, like uh, the team is a bit, um, how should I put it? Like you have the old guys who are like uh, on their sun- sunset. Uh, Simon Suva, you talk of Samata, Himid Mao. Yeah, most of us, of mo- all most of the fans, believe that maybe this is their last uh, big tournament. Then um, you are after that. You don't have. Uh, uh, a good backbone because, like, you have the old guys and then you have uh, young stars. For example, if you go back to, if you check the last game against uh, against Morocco, um, the head coach was trying maybe to show us like uh, what is coming. You know, he did he, he did bench um, Suva, Samata, and other old guys, and started the the the, the youngsters. So in terms of um, uh, expectation is not much. We just want to go there. Of, of course, for us, just qualifying, even the way we, like the way we did qualify, because we were, we were in a group with Uganda and uh, Niger, and uh, maybe most thought maybe Uganda would qualify ahead of us, but we did. But even in the manner and the way we did qualify, you look at um, because I think we had eight points and we only scored three goals, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see, I think we scored three goals in six games. So the expectation is not much. Just go there, but don't embarrass the the, the nation. That's what I think most people expect. No, I don't. Mm. I haven't seen anyone who is say like, "Oh, we are going there, maybe to go for the for the quarterfinals or semis." No, just go there. If 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 we reach the knockout stage, that is very good, I think. But we just want to go there and not embrace ourselves. Mm. And, and obviously, like, you know, it... You see, 
let me ask one story. I'm saying, mm -hmm. you know, with Tanzania, uh, the national team came after, and okay, unlike in most African countries, whereby you find uh, maybe the big clubs came after the national team, but for Tanzania, it's a bit different. It's like um, Simba and Yanga first, okay, then the national team. You see, the, the Simba and Yanga, like uh, they were established maybe in the 1930s. Then you have a Taifa star maybe playing their first game in 1960s. So there is that. So even in terms of expectation, for example, if Taifa star goes to Ghana or goes to maybe to play in um, Nigeria or we go to Congo, we don't expect them to win. But if it's Simba or Yanga going, let's say, to Mali or going to Senegal uh, to play against a club there, we expect them to win. So there is a high expectation when it comes to the to the two clubs compared to the national team uh, uh and, and 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 this goes even to the team selection it's 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 so easy to find a bench warmer and uh, at at simba or yanga playing for for taifa stars so you see it's not good enough to start for simba or yanga or azam but for for taifa stars you find is a guaranteed starter so it's a bit different. Mm. So that goes up to even to in terms of that uh, kind of expectation. If we win, we say, wow, well done. We lose, then we go, how do we lose? If it's like um, it's, a, it's a huge defeat, then of course we call for the, the last questions, what? But it's not as much as uh, the, the, so the, two, the two big clubs, Simba and Yanga. So even and, and I wanted... to be the same. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk about Simba Nyanga because obviously for me, Tanzania is, is fascinating because you're one of the most exciting kind of club competitions on the continent is, is the Tanzanian Premier League now in term and the, the way it's grown in the past, you know, three, four, five years has been remarkable with, you know, the, you know, like it's the only, it's the only league in, in, in all of Africa that I can just get on my app, on my phone and watch every single match, you know, and, and do simultaneous broadcasts. And as I'm have done so much in terms of putting in money and infrastructure and turning it into a, you know, a really, really top league on the continental scene. And obviously then Simba and Nyanga have actually kind of started to make, you know, like you're saying, make waves on, on the continental stage, you know, Simba beating al -Akhli a few years ago, Nyanga making it to the Confederation Cup final, you know, but have we seen any of that success on the club side of the game translating to the national team, to the Taifa Stars, or is it still kind of too early to see that kind of progression? Uh, it's not too early. Uh, the effect is there. Of course, the first time, the first time, um, uh, you see, Simba and Yanga, their success came maybe after we, like, um, we allowed or we increased the number of foreign foreign players in the league. You see, so at first it was five, then we increased to seven, then from seven, I think twenty to ten. And then right now you can sign up to twelve foreign players, which is like I think a very few African league that I know. Maybe I don't know if there's any that allow that high number of, of foreigners. So you'd find that uh, for some, some would say like, oh, maybe it's limiting the national team, but um, I'm, I'm of the opposite view because um, the few players that get to play for, the few local players that get to play for Simba and Yanga, you'd say are good enough. They are there on merit, not because of their passports. Mm -hmm. And you can see like, um, for example, um, Maybe the captain uh, Bakari Mamneto of Young Africans is a player that maybe like uh, while while he was at uh, this small team, Coastal Union, uh, you'd not rate him. But at Younger, you can see his growth just because he's surrounded by quality, so it rubs off. See, yes, it, maybe the number is, is 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 small. You'd say maybe, but you can see like for example, right now, uh, Taifa Star. Uh, the, 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 the back four or the backbone of that defense is mainly made of younger players. So mm -hmm. it's good. It's good. Yeah, and a few, and, and, and maybe like two years ago, it was made up of uh, Simba because Simba were doing well in, in CAF, in CAF, uh, in CAF uh, Champions League. So yeah. the effect, I think, uh, it's seen, it's seen, it's seen. 
the mm. number of players might be few, but you can see the, the, the few who are making it, who are playing game in, game out for Simba. Like, um, because in the past, we used to go, maybe you go to Egypt, it's Taifa style Simba, and you'd see our players freezing, because it's like literally freezing, you see? But now, because they are used like uh, every, like uh, every month, you play against, uh, you play in Egypt, you play in Congo, you play in all all environments. So it's it's increased their confidence, their level of intensity, competition, which in the end also benefits Taifa Stars. Mm. And and I, I guess I, I, I want to go back to your qualification, because like you said, you know, it was always going to be a tough qualification. You're with Algeria, probably... Yes. You know, despite their poor performance at the last, last AFCON, probably the best qualifiers in Africa. You know, they always, every, I think they had that ludicrous unbeaten run qualifications. They almost always win every single match. And then you had that, that, that key double match against Uganda. Obviously, you both won 1 0. So it was coming down to that last day. And you have to go to Algiers and get a result whilst, uh, whilst Uganda just have to beat Niger. Obviously, Uganda beat Niger. Yeah. And you guys, I remember watching those last couple of minutes of just kind of backs against the wall. Bus has been f- not just parked, like the wheels have been taken off. It's not going anywhere. You're in your own box in Algeria. Granted, a kind of a rotated Algeria team, but kind of knocking on the door, knocking on the door, and you hold out for that nil-nil draw. And when you compare that to, say, in the last AFCON, when obviously you were in Algeria's group, you play Algeria in the final group game, 3-0, comfortable victory for Algeria. Does Does that show you the kind of growth of Tanzania or is it is it a bit too naive to just read into that those two results against against Algeria no there is a correlation as I said uh, for example the last game against Algeria the draw we didn't we didn't play well but again based on like on our past or our previous performance against North African teams you could see our players never like um they like they they never like, froze you see because that was our biggest issue. You see a player who is good enough in the league, but when it comes like to the away games, we say, wow, what am I seeing? It's like totally a different player. But here you have uh, Bakari Mamnieto, you have got Baka, they have played these games, they are like, they have gone to Algeria, they have gone to Tunis- Tunisia, they have gone to South Africa. So it's not uh, even like, uh, even if uh, it's like a full stadium, uh, they are not afraid, no, they don't freeze in that, uh, in that um, a moment as opposed to the way, the way we used to do, the way we used to do like uh, maybe five or four years ago. Remember when we went to Algeria in 2015 and uh, <laughs> even just before the game started, you could see like uh, this player, a big, big player, maybe for Simba and Yanga and who is a starter for Taifa Star saying, oh, I don't have shoes, but you know, mentally he's gone even before the game. But mm-hmm. now it's different, thanks to uh, Simba and Yanga playing these uh, playing these big games against big big clubs. Yeah, absolutely, and and you know, like you said, the spine of this team, particularly the back, seems to be you know typically a kind of a, a Yanga favored back four, and then you have Manula, the Simba goalkeeper. But ultimately, still up front, there is a reliance and a, and you know the the key talismanic figure is in Buana Samata. You know, talk to me about him a little bit because he's he's been this kind of semi-iconic legendary figure in Tanzania for a while. He obviously went to Aston Villa, became that first Tanzanian in the Premier League, but I think he but it didn't really work out for him there. You know, he only got the one goal I think in the Premier League and then has kind of had a bit more of a journeyman's career in Turkey, in Greece, in Belgium and a few other places. You know, how is but but I also, also he he's been struggling for goals in form with this Tanzania side. Like you said, you only three goals in qualification. You know you're going to struggle for goals. But I think it was Msuva who got who, who's kind of been the, the 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 threat in terms of the goals. How how is Samata looking kind of coming into this? Yeah, talking of Samata, actually that's our I think our biggest issue, our biggest issue, and um, all the coaches. I, I mean even the previous one uh, who uh, Kim Paulsen, you'd see. Almost in every every game, every squad that you call, he kept on changing the center forward. We don't have because um, you look at Simba, Yang, Azam, our top three clubs, uh, they rely on foreigners. You see, local players, most of them um, are defenders, maybe and midfielders. So when it comes to Taifa Stars, we have that issue. Uh, 
Uh, so it goes back to Samata. Of course, he's getting some people saying, no, he's not doing that. But if, if, if you look at it now, like um, deep, like deep, you would see it's not it's not an issue of Samata, but it's it's it's, it's like a, it's a big issue, a, a big issue that affects, that goes back to the league that um, the top clubs use foreigners. You, you go to Simba, they have got uh, Jean Baleke, they have got Moses Fili from Zambia, uh, Chama. Then you go to Yanga, it's the same. You go to Azam, it's the same. So it comes to Taifa Stars, you have that issue. Um, uh, so Samata in Europe, or where he plays, he most plays more like a, more like a poacher, like a poacher. But for Taifa Stars, because of uh, we lack uh, a centre forward and maybe a proper attacking midfielder, so he's kind of playing like a false nine. So, so given his age, he has to play very deep. So mm. it's very different. So people say, ah, Samata comes to the national team and he's not doing well. But it's not true. It's how the team is set up. The, the team is set up like... Um, uh, because at least with Samata, because you see, with Msuva, is more of a, just like a finisher. Okay, mm-hmm. it's more giving the ball, you can finish, but technically, maybe not that good, you can't play him as a midfielder. But with Samata, at least he has that technical ability, you can play him as a false nine. So, obvious, it's like, a, it's like, it's like he's, sacri- he's sacrificed. Yeah, you know, and, and with Taifa Stars, most of the most of the games we are the underdogs. We don't have the ball, so, yeah. don't, so you don't have the ball. He's playing very deep. There's yeah. nothing, and uh, given his age, he can't run that much, so it becomes an issue. But it's not about Samata. The issue is we do not have, uh, or we're not producing enough centre forward. That's mm. why the big three clubs they are all relying on foreigners. That's the issue. That's the issue. That's the issue. It's not about Samata. Even if we say, like, um, in the last game against Morocco, Samata was on the bench. We played well. You could see, like, good build-up. But in, in, the, in the final third, there was nothing. Because there's no Samata. Mm. Yeah. And um, Suva, so sometimes, like, um, uh, for example, against Niger, the coach tried uh, to put uh, Simon Suva on the wings, but you could see uh, the current Simon Suva is not the same that we used to, to see like uh, four, five years ago. Okay, he wants like he needs to play very close or on the box to score. So if you put him on the wings, then you get very little output. So it's an issue where, where how, how do we accommodate these two experienced players that we still need? Because these youngsters are not, are, are not yet maybe uh, to, to, to the level that you, they can be trusted. See, so it's, it's, it's an issue. Uh, do you put some? Do you put Samata as a false nine, or do you put um, Suva maybe on the wings? So it's an issue um, that the coach is trying to address. So you find in every squad it keeps on calling. Center forwards, like for like in this squad, I think he called a, a guy who was playing, or who is playing from Tibua Sugar. Maybe he scored only three goals. You can see he scored three goals, while maybe the, the top scorer has seven goals. See the, the, the mm. difference? But just because it's like you look at the the top scorer chart and you see, oh, there's a local guy who has got three goals. Okay, let's try him. He did yeah. try him, but I think he, in the two games, I think he came he, he, he came on against Morocco, and I think in the last, um, I think in added time. Which means maybe even the coach wasn't impressed. In the previous, I think in the September, yeah, in the September squad, he called a guy from, I think he was playing in, in Congo, two games dropped. Then in October, different. So that's the biggest issue. Like, who is going to play centre forward? So the, the coach is trying to see. I think they even tried this guy from. Is 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 um okay? Is a Congolese? Okay, his parents were okay. He was born in Tanzania by Congolese parents, so he's, he's, he plays in Australia. So he was called, but you could see he's also not a striker. Yeah. Uh, I think he's called Charles. Is it Charles? Charles Charles Mombwa, mm-hmm. plays in Australia. 
So that's the biggest issue. Like, who is going to play center forward? That's our, that's our, that's our biggest issue. Mm. So the defense is a, is a bit settled. Um, the midfielder, I'm not so sure. I think uh, there might be a few changes. But the biggest issue is the center forward position. Yeah, that's the biggest absolutely. Issue. Yes, and I, this this then brings me into to you know looking forward to to the actual tournament itself because you guys have not been blessed with an easy group. You're you're in one of the most <laughs> difficult groups. Um, you've got Zambia, a very very attacking, very exciting. I think one of the most exciting teams to watch yes, on the continent, actually, Zambia. Yes. If if there's anyone you're going to score against, it's Zambia. But they might they might also put five past you. And yes, then you've if got score two. Then they they, they they score four. Exactly. That's- Yes. And then, and then you've got DRC. DRC, you know, always, uh, you know, it, one of those that they never fulfill the potential. Great. You exactly, you never know what you're going to get with, with DRC. You know, they could come and make it to the semifinals, or they could, you know, crash out in the group stage. And then, of course, you've got Morocco, who is one of the favorites, World Cup semifinalists, one of the biggest teams in it kind of in getting into world football you know also beat brazil since the world cup and you know one of one of the most exciting african coaches in walid ragagi coaching them but obviously you're you've been in their world cup qualifying group you had a taste of what's to come when you played morocco in the world cup qualifiers at home granted different different environment lost two nil but you were reduced to 10 men for quite a while in the match yeah. how are you feeling going into that first match against morocco uh, I think it could be the same like the last game against Morocco. I mean, like, yeah, because we, the, the first game is against Morocco again. Uh, on, in, I think in, in um, oh, on January 17th. Yeah. 17th, yeah. Yes, the first game. Uh, based on uh, the coach, the lineup, the squad selection, you see is more of... Um, trying to build up for the future not for afcon not for the for the world cup qualifier i think he's just trying to build up like um like he's, he's the, he knows that samata he made a lot of guys like uh, on their sunset years so um that's why i said even in terms of expectation it's not too much you can see mm. it's not it's, 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 it's not much it's not much it's not much it's just like um People would be more would, would, would be looking at uh, how do we do in terms of performance. You know, if you go there, maybe you lose. Um, like the last time we, we, we lost two two nil, but you could see nobody was bashing the players. Yeah, nobody was like calling for maybe the coach's edge. No, because you, you could see like uh, these like uh, youngsters. So you cannot um, expect too much. Oh, so I think for uh, for Tanzania, uh, the, the the coming Afcon, it's more about building up for the for the future, especially the twenty twenty seven Afcon, mm-hmm. and uh, just making sure we qualify for the twenty twenty five Afcon. I mm-hmm. think that's 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 the main objective of the of the coach, uh, maybe and even TFF, maybe and even the ministry. That's mm-hmm. why that's why the coach could afford, like in a big big game, crucial game, he could afford to to bench uh, him. I mean, to to to, to bench Samata. Mm-hmm. I've never seen like uh, for the past maybe I, I can't remember the last time Samata was. Was on the bench. I can't remember. Yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember from the, the last ten years since I think maybe since since he became a regular because he he made his his his, his national team the um, uh, first cup I think was in 2011. Then he became he became a regular in 20 I think 2013 2012. Since then I've never seen him like on the bench. But for the first time you could see he's, he's on the bench in a big big game against Morocco. Just because the coach knows that we are trying to build a squad for 2025, ensure that okay, we go to Afcon. Yes, we have gone there. We know how how we qualified. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Like in six games, you score only three goals. You can see. So he knows the task ahead. It's 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 all about building a squad for 20 
25 AFCON qualification and uh, more importantly for uh, the 2027 AFCON. So it's about mm -hmm. the future for us, about the future. It's about the future. Yeah. Yes, 20, and, and of course, and of course, not going there. We're, we're talking about the future, but not going there. And the first game you use three nil. Second yeah. game you get five. No, 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 no. Yeah. Not that. Not that. Just go there. Don't embarrass the nation. That's all. That's the bare minimum. That, that that that's interesting because. And do you think that you know Adal Amrichi? He's he's only come in recently in into the, the 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 manager's job. Do you think that he'll give? he'll be given that time to develop this team? Because we, I mean, we both know how brutal kind of the manager, managerial uh, kind of merry-go-round can be in African football, particularly at the national level. You know, like if, if it is a difficult kind of performance at this AFCON, do you think that he'll be given the chance to stay on and, and develop the kind of young team as it going into the kind of 2025 cycle? Uh, I think it all depends on how he performs, as in, like uh, I've said, he might lose all the games or maybe lose two, draw one. Okay, fine. But how how do you perform? That's the most important. I think mm. they look at the performance. For example, against Morocco, you would say, yes, we are playing well. Maybe not. Um, yeah, we are, okay, the team was like playing well. They build up, although lacking that cutting edge in the final third. So you say, ah, losing two against Morocco, that's okay. That we can take. But if you go there and like you get to beaten, you get to beaten three nil, two nil, five nil in all the three, in, in all the games, you won't survive. You won't survive. But uh, because, uh, and to be to be honest, uh, he's not one of the most uh, diplomatic coaches, you know. So he's not mm. diplomatic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so he's not, what, what 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 do you mean about that? Tell me. Tell me. Mm. He, 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 okay, he's a strong. He has that strong personality, you know. Uh -huh. He has that strong personality, so it's not easy. So you find that um, he has that. He, he has the bit of job security because, um, unlike unlike the other coaches, it's not TFF that is paying him, but the ministry. Ah, yes, that's interesting. Yes, so. So sometimes, so you can afford maybe to rub, uh, <laughs> to yeah, rub people the wrong way, the federation, yeah, and get away with it, yeah, yeah. Plus this, the Afcon thing gave him a bit of, yeah, yeah, cr yeah credit as well. Yes, yeah, but absolutely. It's not diplomatic. Huh? It's not diplomatic in, in 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 all his jobs, in all his jobs like Kenya, Botswana, even back home. Mm -hmm. But he has that Afcon, the Afcon ticket, so he has a bit of honeymoon. I think uh, plus he's building something maybe for the future. So it's the way he has he, the way he has convinced the ministry and TFF. Mm. So it's a, it's a tournament of managing expectations and and keeping exactly. a level a level exactly. head. Michael, thank you so much for 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 speaking to us. As as with all our other experts and who we've been speaking to, we we finish off with a quick fire series of questions and I'm, I'm looking for quick answers not too much thought i don't want any this or this this or this i want i want straight answers so i want to ask you first of all coming into this turn we've talked about in Bana Samata and a few others who do you think is tanzania's best player coming into this tournament who is the one to watch uh i would say faisal salum mm -hmm. Okay, Faisal Saloum from uh, he's Azam, right? Is Azam, Azam, yes, Azam. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also like uh, uh, Ibrahim Baka, the defender. So mm -hmm. one to watch. And and who, uh, okay, and then the next is who is who is the youngster to watch? We've talked about this is a young team coming through. Oh, who are the youngsters we need to keep an eye on? Okay. Um, you'd say Novatus Dismas. Mm -hmm. um, then we have got uh, another one like um, Maurice Abraham. Okay, and yes. then. My next question: How far are Tanzania going in this in this Afcon? I need a prediction. I think uh, most likely group stage exit. Group if, stage if, exit. If we finish third, for me, it's like uh, it's a success. It's good. It's good. Okay. It's okay. Good. Who is going to win the tournament? Oh, it's Africa. It's going to mm -hmm. be playing Morocco. So I would go for a North African team. I would say I'll go for Morocco. The host. Morocco. Ah, not, not, ah, sorry, 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 sorry. It's not. It's, it's Ivory Coast. Yeah. It's it's in West Africa. Yeah. So I'll go for West African team. Uh, Senegal defending champions. Mm hmm. 
mm, they might suffer the <laughs> defending champion cuts. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> um, okay, I'll go for Morocco. Though, Morocco. Though, yeah, though I have got my, I think uh, it's being played in West Africa. I'm not so sure, but I'll go for Morocco. Morocco, it is. Because, gonna, who's gonna who, who's gonna be top scorer this tournament? Victor. Victor. Okay, if he comes, if he's if he's allowed to come this time, <laughs> I think I think he'll come. He'll come. He'll come. <laughs> and who's gonna who's gonna get the best player award? Player of the tournament. Mm, best player. Uh, I think the usual the usual the usual suspect are a bit. Uh, say, going to be the best player <laughs> hey, that's tough that's a tough one you you've, you've got with morocco for the team is if they win it who is it going to be a moroccan who gets player of the tournament no really or is it going to really. be losing finalist who knows huh? i think uh do they have uh someone very outstanding morocco no not really they just have a good team a good team mm-hmm. good players but not not someone like very outstanding. Of course, they are Ashraf Hakim and whatever. But, uh, I kind of doubt. But as a team, yes, Morocco or Algeria. I think I got issues. Yeah. I so, uh, my God, you're you're avoiding the question. Who's who's going to be the player of the tournament? Too <laughs> early. <laughs> it's too early. It's, it's too early. early. No, it's <laughs> never it's never too early to make um, wild predictions. Give me a give me a name. Okay, let me go with Victor again. Okay, yeah, makes sense. If he's top scorer, he might be player of the tournament. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, thank you so much. Love love the insight. Love the level headed. I feel like most of the people I speak to, they they way overestimate where their nation is gonna come. So I appreciate the the kind of calm the calm head from you saying mm, maybe not. Let's not get overexcited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> of course, it's 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 a big issue. Sometimes they even call you names, but it's football, you know. It's football. Mm-hmm.